Okay, so today we're going to be talking about different types of reactions. And I'm just going to warn you ahead of time, this is a bit of a long um, slide. We're going to be covering a lot of information in, this, in these notes. So just kind of sit back and enjoy. Uh, so chemical reactions are processes in which one or more substances are converted into new substances with different physical and chemical properties. The reactants, the substances that contribute to or are needed in a chemical reaction, and the products, as substances that are produced or made by a chemical reaction. So that's kind of the terminology that we're going to be working with here. Our reactants are the things that go into or um, are needed in order to create the reaction and the products is what is, ma is made. So without reactants, there's no reaction, but if there is a reaction, there will be products. The thing to remember about chemical reactions is that those substances that we start out with and the new substances that we form, we have the same initial elements on both sides. Uh, they are going to be combining into different compounds, but the elements don't change. Now reactions happen uh, to make new, new substances and they occur because these new substances are made by breaking existing bonds, rearranging the atoms, and then forming new bonds. So for example, I have methane here and oxygen, or CH4 and O2, and if I break the bonds associated the carbon-hydrogen bonds and the oxygen-oxygen double bonds, I can rearrange these and make carbon dioxide and water. Um, so again, I still have the same carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on the left, and carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on the right. Now right now you'll notice that I don't exactly have this balance. There aren't the same number of everything on both sides, but we'll get into that um, tomorrow when we start talking about balancing chemical reactions. Substances undergo these chemical reactions with each other to gain stability, and this is based on the reactivity of different substances. Now, we like to describe what happens. Chemists like to describe what happens. So we describe what happens in chemical reactions by using chemical equations. It's a lot like math. Uh, we can do word equations where we give the chemical names of reactants and products. For example, calcium plus oxygen will yield calcium oxide. Or we can use formula equations where we give the chemical formulas of the reactants and the products. So Ca plus O2 makes CaO. Same exact reaction, same um, exact product, but just using formulas versus words. Now, we're going to be looking at and studying five specific different types of chemical reactions. The first one would be synthesis reactions or direct combination reactions, and then decomposition reactions, single displacement reactions, double displacement reactions, and combustion reactions. So we're going to now detail out each of these. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm not feeling very well. Um, so a synthesis reaction or a direct combination reaction occurs when you have two products, A and B, and you're going to make, sorry, two reactants, A and B, and you're going to make one product, AB. Or like these little dancers here, two single partners coming together to make one partner. So synthesis reactions have two or more reactants, these can be elements or compounds, and they come together to form one product, which is usually a compound, A plus B making AB. Or for example, sodium plus chlorine making sodium chloride, and here we've actually balanced the reaction. But you can see that we start out with two reactants and we make one product. That's the way that you would identify a synthesis reaction. Uh, another example would be uh, iron plus oxygen, making iron 3 oxide. Okay, again, two reactants making one product. Now, decomposition reactions are the opposite of synthesis reactions. It's taking a, a combination or a, um, a compound and breaking it up into its constituent elements. So, for example, uh, we've got one reactant, usually a compound, which is broken down into two or more smaller products. These can be compounds or elements. It doesn't matter. So AB becomes A plus B. Uh, for example, water can be broken down into its constituent elements of hydrogen and oxygen gases. So you would be able to identify a de decomposition reaction by looking at the fact that there's one reactant making two products. 
Now, single displacement reactions are where one element comes in and displaces a different element from a compound. So it's a single lone element displacing. So it's an uncombined element displaces an element found in a compound to form a new compound, leaving the displaced element uncombined. So you're going to have like a compound and a lone element as reactants, and then you're going to make a new compound with that leftover element as a product. So A plus BX making AX plus B. Uh, a, BX and AX are generally ionic compounds, and A and B are elements, usually. So for example, magnesium plus copper sulfate will make magnesium sulfate and copper or iron plus copper sulfate will make iron, sul iron two sulfate and copper. So here you see that copper is the uh, element that's being displaced. Magnesium displaces the copper to combine with the sulfate, leaving the copper by itself, or iron comes in and displaces the copper uh, to make iron two sulfate and leaving copper displaced. Now there are rules that dictate whether or not these reactions are going to happen. A more active element is going to replace or displace a less active element. And the same type of element will always replace the same type of element. You're not going to have a metal displacing a non-metal. So a metal will replace a metal, a non-metal will replace a non-metal. You can't have them crossing over like that. And the activity series is used to determine the more or less active elements from each other. So let's take a look at that. The substances higher in the table will replace sub substances lower in the table. So for example, um, lead plus copper sulfate will make copper plus lead two sulfate. However, silver plus copper sulfate will have no reaction. And we'll see why in just a slide. So the activity series tells us where things are. The higher up you are in the table, so up here, the more active or reactive you are. So if we look back at that copper and silver example, copper is above silver, so silver cannot displace copper. But um, lead is above copper, so lead can displace copper, which is why those reactions happen. Lead will displace copper, but silver won't displace, won't displace lead, so we'll say no reaction. Um, on tests, you will be given the activity series. This is not something that I expect you to memorize. So let's do some practice. So if we've got magnesium plus 2 uh, HCl, magnesium is above hydrogen on the reactivity series, so magnesium will make magnesium chloride, leaving hydrogen by itself. But if we look at sodium chloride and hydrogen, sodium is not higher up than hydrogen on the reactivity series, so there will be no reaction. Now let's take an example, aluminum and sodium chloride. So if we go back to aluminum and sodium chloride, so aluminum's up here and sodium is up here, sodium is higher than aluminum, so what do you guys think? Reaction or no reaction? Hopefully you've said no reaction. Because sodium is higher up than aluminum, therefore aluminum cannot displace sodium. But what about aluminum and zinc? So let's take a look at aluminum versus zinc. Aluminum is higher than zinc, so hopefully you guys guessed that aluminum will displace zinc, and it will. It will make aluminum chloride and zinc. And we're going to talk about balancing these reactions in a little bit, but right now we're just worried about being able to identify these types of reactions. And single displacement reactions are identified by a lone element plus a compound making a new compound with a different lone element. All right, double displacement reactions. So this is just kind of a party, all right? Double displacement reactions happen when elements from two different compounds replace each other or switch partners. Uh, these are reactions in which there are two compounds as reactants and two different compounds as products, but the same four elements are on both sides. So AX plus BY is equal to AY plus BX. Or for example, HCl plus CaOH2 will make calcium chloride plus water. So hydrochloric acid plus calcium oxide will make calcium chloride and water. Notice that the calcium now partnered up with the chlorine and the H and the OH partner up together, but HOH can more easily be written as H2O or water. Now there are of course rules that dictate this, just like there are rules that dictated single displacement reactions. Double displacement reactions will not occur unless 
all reactants are dissolved in water so that the compounds can separate out into ions, meaning that all reactants need to be aqueous. And that's a phase label that we'll start talking about soon. And then one of the following also has to occur. Either one of the products is a gas, one of the products is a precipitate, meaning the solid, or one of the products is water. So all the reactants have to be aqueous, and then essentially one of the products needs to not be aqueous. It needs to be a gas, a solid, or water. And then a table of solubility rules, which you will also be given on a test, can be used to determine if a precipitate is going to be formed or not. So if I have silver nitrate and sodium chloride, silver nitrate and sodium chloride are both aqueous, and when they swapped partners, and you're going to swap different partners, so like swaps with like, so this silver metal is going to swap the, this sodium, so silver is going to combine with, cal with chlorine, silver chloride, and then sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate is aqueous, silver chloride is not, so we have aqueous reactants and one non-aqueous product, so that reaction will occur. Okay. Then we've got magnesium hydroxide plus aluminum nitrate making magnesium nitrate and aluminum hydroxide. If we look at this reaction and say, okay, is this reaction going to take place or not? We look at my reactants. One of my reactants is not aqueous. So this reaction is not going to take place because both reactants are not aqueous. So now I want you guys to take a, take a stab at this one. Uh, I've got potassium bromide and sodium nitrate making potassium nitrate and sodium bromide. Is this reaction going to take place? Think about the rules that we just discussed and determine if this reaction is going to take place or not. Now hopefully you decided that this reaction would in fact not take place. And the answer is, is because while both reactants are aqueous, so are both products. And you cannot make, um, you have to make a non-aqueous product as part of your reaction in order for it to occur. So this would not in fact work. But what about sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, making sodium chloride and water? Would this reaction happen? And hopefully the answer for you is yes, because both reactants are aqueous and water is a product, which is one of the um, possible options for our products in order for this to happen. All right, and lastly, let's look at combustion reactions, and I'm identifying combustion reactions. And these are reactions where two of the products are going to be carbon dioxide and water. And oxygen, or O2, must be a reactant. Reactions, combustion reactions are reactions that occur with burning, and they require an oxidizing fuel such as oxygen. So C3H8 plus oxygen making three carbon dioxides and four waters is an example of a combustion reaction. Now don't be fooled by a reaction where you produce carbon dioxide and water. Those are not always combustion reactions. They must not only produce carbon dioxide and water, but they must have oxygen as a reactant. So make sure that you're aware of that. So those are the different reaction types that we're going to be talking about. Uh, tomorrow we're going to look at identifying these reactions and determining if they're going to take place or not. And then from then there, we're going to move on to balancing the res reactions. And after that, we're going to start trying to predict products and all that stuff. It's going to get really fun. So have a good night, guys.